and I don't know if he's doing it right this moment, but Joe Biden supposedly is going to be rolling out a horrible plan to inhibit asylum seekers from coming into this country. The plan is that if the number of asylum seekers crossing the border reaches 2,500 a day, which it already has, it's at 3,500, down from its high significantly from where I think it was like a tenth, uh, uh, not a day, a week, sorry. Um, we're at 3,500 a week, down from its high, which was 10,000, I think back in January. They will suspend all asylum applications and immediately deport people until the number of asylum seekers drops below 1,500. And for maybe even for a certain period of time, maybe a number of weeks. This is patently illegal. Donald Trump tried to do it. The federal court stopped him. I hope the federal court stopped Joe Biden's uh, plan as well. It is contrary to U.S. and international law. And he's doing so because of polling, which shows that immigration is of high import to a lot of Trump voters. And it is both inhumane illegal and poor politics because you're never going to out trump and out nativist and out xenophobe and out racist donald trump they'll always go for the real thing here's donald trump uh on fox and friends talking about his plans to weaponize local police forces to basically become these like mini little gestapos time now i'm going to do the big deportation the biggest ever eisenhower did the biggest this will be bigger but it's a it's a very tough thing what they've done to our country is unthinkable that they could do this and so many other things i mean going to new york the kids can't have little league games anymore it sounds so trivial right why because the migrants are living on the fields they oh, have no unless you guy living in new york here guy with an 11 year old son not playing baseball anymore it's not because he can't it's because he doesn't want to but his friends still do and you still on play actual softball and i play softball tonight and i'm gonna be able to play softball tonight you just have to jump over the migrant on the way to first base we negotiate with them and say uh, okay will you be first base and so all you gotta do you run by high five and that's the way that you uh, you do it this is what they're talking about with the great replacement theory all these migrants are replacing your buddies on the softball team. come to something right. as american as baseball that's right exactly <laughs> trivial right why because the migrants are living on the fields if you build it tents, okay. unless you want to <laughs> play around the tent how can you how can you implement deportations and do you think the public will have Pause it. incidentally yeah. all these people live in new york too and I think Will Kane has uh, kids, and he must know, although granted, you know, maybe at the private schools that he's sending his kids to. Uh, it's a migrant-free zone. It's a migrant-free zone. But he must, he would probably have heard some stories about his kids' friends not being able to play their baseball game because all the migrants on the fields. And so you'd think he'd say, I know that's the case, Mr. President. <laughs> Or if he knew it wasn't the case, you'd think he'd say like, oh, I don't think that's really the case. I mean, it's possible that it happened once one day, uh, but that's but like the solution to that where this happens is expanded federal support for asylum seekers. Oh, there was a uh, piece of uh, legislation that was uh, sort of aimed towards that and Donald Trump killed it. Uh, exactly. How can you implement deportations and do you think the public will have the appetite, the stomach for right. watching deportations on their television screen? Well, that question is so, uh, so great and so tough because, you know, the radical left is going to start saying, oh, look, so you'll get rid of 10 really bad ones. And one, you know, beautiful mother who they think is guilty of something and maybe she is, maybe. And it'll become a story or a family that's a good family and came in wrong and you know they're going to show it then it's going to always be tough it's not going to be easy and we have to use a lot of good judgment but the way you get rid of them is the local police you know the local police know these people by their first name their middle name and their last name the local police are great they're just not allowed to do their job they're afraid of losing their pension 
They're afraid of losing their wife or husband. They're lo going to lose their house. They're losing everything. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I'm doing is giving uh, a local police uh, immunity from prosecution. They're oh, good. Prosecutor. Okay, they okay, job, okay. Get... This is just absolutely back crap crazy. First off, let's just be clear. Let's review. 10 to 1 ratio. Bad ones. One good one. Attractive woman. <laughs> Uh, can we just back up? This is what Obama did, right? This was Obama's board enforcement of just go after the bad ones mainly. And then yeah. like, so much of those were that Trump was having to go after. Oh, there's maybe more good ones than I wanted to. But you still got to be tough and judgmental. Well, he's saying there's a 10 to 1 ratio. Yeah. You know, it's mostly Mexican rapists. But there's also some good ones. I want to be clear about that. The women, maybe they're good. Maybe. The hot women. And then he's going to allow local police to do this by getting rid of of or increasing the amount of immunity that cops already have, which is enormous in this country uh, for their actions. But if you talk to most reasonable uh, police officers, first responders, whatnot, the reason why they know that they don't want to enforce these things and they're not obligated to is because their job is to ostensibly keep the community safe. And if you have people who um, particularly live in vulnerable um, populations who are afraid of saying, hey, there's a fire down the street, or hey, this person's having a heart attack, or hey, that person has a gun, you, it's going to make your job that much harder. I mean, that's specifically the reason why that happens. Um, Can I ask what he meant about how cops, uh, if they they're losing their wives for doing their jobs, they're getting sued for I don't know. God knows what's in his mind. I mean, honestly, if you don't that, let them get do police brutality, all you cops, you're gonna your wives are gonna leave you because they won't see you as a man exactly. anymore. Exactly. Yeah, it it seems like mostly like a broad, broad like qualified immunity pitch. Also, like we, we you can do literally whatever you want. And we'll excuse it. I guess. Um. All right. Let's do one. Glad uh, Dave Smith, uh, that libertarian Dave Smith invited him to speak to libertarians and told him to shut up about it. I mean, I know I know he changed that s subsequently, but this guy who's give the cops unshackled authority was ca came to speak at a libertarian convention. Good job, guys. Right. We're not afraid like those lefty snowflakes to... Uh, have him come and say those words and platform him him saying that <laughs> like let's militarize the border more and give cops uh deputy status is that big government i don't know look who knows hey folks don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show we do it every day at 12 p.m eastern for about two and a half hours we even take phone calls you should check that out